Hello, we are the Mad Gal Ensemble. Sadly, we couldn't give our Roald Dahl themed revolting rhymes and marvellous music show this year at Proms at St Jude's, but we're delighted to be part of this year's Proms at Home programme, raising money for Toynbee Hall and the North London Hospice. Please consider supporting these wonderful charities at the end of our event today. Normally, we all play together in a wind quintet. It's called a quintet because there are five of us, and in a bit I am sure you will find out where the wind part of our name comes from. We are going to introduce you to each of our instruments and all of the magical things they can do. And along the way, we are going to meet some characters from Roald Dahl's wonderful stories. There will be fun activities to get involved with. And if you have any of these things at home, now would be a fantastic moment to find a plastic straw and a pair of scissors for an activity that Kat is going to do with you. And then for something I'm going to make with you, you will need a bottle with a lid, some decorations for the outside of your bottle, a jug of coloured water, you can make this using some food colouring, and some nice things to put inside your bottle like glitter or little flowers. There will also be a competition that we would love for you to take part in and the chance at the very end of this video to hear us all playing together as a full wind quintet. So let's crack on. Here's Susie to tell you all about her marvellous instrument. Hi, my name's Susie and I play the flute. I started learning the flute when I was in year three because I heard it and I just loved the sound that it made. But before that, I played the recorder. I wonder how many of you might play the flute or the recorder too. With famous people from history like President George Washington and artist Leonardo da Vinci also being flute players, we're in really good company. The flute belongs to a group of instruments called the woodwind family. The wind part of this word is because we use our air to make the sound, but I'm sure you're thinking, well, what about the wood part of the word? The flute you're holding is made of metal. Well, yes, you're completely right. The flute I am holding is made of a metal called silver. But a while ago, flutes were actually made of wood. And then it's been developed through time, so it looks like the one I'm holding today. In fact, the flute goes back a really long way, and it was one of the first known musical instruments and has been used for thousands of years. To make a sound on the flute, I have to put my lips on this metal plate here, and blow across like this. When I blow my air across this hole onto the sharp edge opposite, it splits the air into two streams and causes a vibration. A vibration is something that moves back and forward or up and down really, really, really fast. Sometimes too fast for us to even see. For example, let's think about a bee. They flap their wings so fast that it makes the air move and creates a buzz sound. When I blow across my flute, imagine a slinky like wave traveling down this tube, out of the flute, across the air, and into your ear where you can hear the sound. On the body of the flute, this middle bit here, we have all these different buttons and they're called keys. These help us to play lots of different notes by opening or closing them. This is what it sounds like to play from the lowest note of the flute to one of the highest. I love how pure and beautiful the flute can sound. And this reminds me of one of the kindest and sweetest characters that the author Roald Dahl created in his stories. I'm going to play you some music that makes me think of this character and while I play it I'd love you to try and guess who you think it might be. I'll give you a clue. This character is from the story Matilda.
can the flute play nice sweet tunes, but it can play high and fast too, which makes it sound really bright and chirpy, like a bird. The most famous bird that I could think of from Roald Dahl's stories is the roly-poly bird. He's big and has really colourful tail feathers. He has a blue body, a long neck and a crest on his head, a bit like a peacock. He lives in an orange tree in the African jungle, loves to eat berries and is as clever as a monkey. He actually appears in a few of Roald Dahl's books. He's in the Dirty Beast's poem, The Twits, where he says, for most people, flying away on holiday is very expensive, but I can fly anywhere in the world for nothing. And in The Enormous Crocodile, where the crocodile threatens to eat him for lunch, but the roly-poly bird is too fast and quickly flies away. I think this music sounds like the roly-poly bird escaping the crocodile and flying off into the sky. trying to eat her and the music gets really fast and exciting like this now is your chance to have a go at being flute players at home too so grab your bottle any will do and see if you can blow across the top of the hole and make a sound. This makes me think of one of my favourite Roald Dahl stories, the BFG, which in case you didn't know is short for the Big Friendly Giant. In this story, the BFG captures dreams in bottles and keeps them for children to enjoy. About 30 years ago, a little girl called Amy Corcoran read this story and decided to make her own dream in a bottle. She sent it to Roald Dahl and he responded with this letter. Dear Amy, I must write a special letter and thank you for the dream in a bottle. You are the first person in the world who has sent me one of these and it intrigued me very much. I also liked the dream. Tonight I shall go down to the village and blow it through the bedroom window of some sleeping child and see if it works. With love from Roald Dahl. So today I thought we'd make our own version of a dream in a bottle. So you will need your bottle and its lid, some coloured water in a jug. So you can make this by mixing some water with some food colouring, but if you don't have any food colouring at home, that's absolutely fine, just use plain water instead. Some decorations for the outside of your bottle. So I've stuck some um, nice stickers over mine already and I've also made a label and you could do this too so everyone knows who the dream inside belongs to. Then whatever dream ingredients you want to put inside your bottle. I'm going to use some edible hearts and some silver balls. Um, I've got some glitter here as well and I've got some little flowers as well. So the first thing you need to do is you need to take your bottle and if you haven't already clean all the labels from the outside um, before you decorate it. Now it's time to make your dream so take your bottle and sprinkle your dream ingredients inside. So I'm going to add my silver balls and some hearts first of all. This. And then I'm going to add some few flowers to it. There we go. Like that. And you can keep going, add as many or as little as you want to. Then take your coloured water. I'm going to add a bit of um, glitter into mine. Like this here. Now give your mix a magical stir as you think about the dream you've put inside. So maybe you want to think about where would you be? Who would be there? What would you eat and what would you do? 
once you've given it your magical stir, I want you to pour your dream into the bottle. Once you've done this, you can have fun playing it like a flute and blowing all your good dreams and thoughts around your house and out into the world. And once you're finished with that, pop the lid on top of the bottle, put it somewhere you will see it and be reminded of all of the happy dreams inside. I'm now going to pass you over to John so that he can show you all about his instrument. <laughs> Hello, my name's John. I'm the horn player in the Magnard Ensemble. Um, I am a very special member of the group because I am the only player in the wind quintet that plays a brass instrument. Um, I love playing the French horn because it acts like a sort of glue in the ensemble. We like to bind everyone together, making this lovely, warm, rich sound. We play the French horn by using lots and lots of air. So we take a big breath in, and then we put it through the instrument. We put it through this tiny little thing here called a mouthpiece. And when I blow the mouthpiece on its own, it makes a very funny sound like this. But then when I put it on the French horn, it makes this most beautiful sound. And the buzz goes through the mouthpiece through all of this brass tubing and then I can also use these things here which are called valves. It opens up extra bits of tubing that help me to make all the different notes on the instrument. One of the fun facts about playing the French horn is that we can in fact play a piece of hose pipe in the same way that we play the French horn. We can use our little mouthpiece again and we can attach it to the end of a piece of hose pipe. Now, the French horn tubing, if I was really strong and could pull it all apart, would be about four or five meters worth of tubing. I've got a little bit of hose pipe here that is very similar in length to the French horn, and so I'm going to play it like a French horn. <laughs> For anyone who'd like to have their own go at playing a hosepipe like a French horn, an old hosepipe coupler would work perfectly instead of a mouthpiece. Just make sure you wash it out first. In our Revolting Rhymes and Marvellous Music concert, the horn plays many different characters throughout the stories. My favourite is in Little Red Riding Hood when we first meet the wolf and we find out he's actually a little bit silly. <laughs> My favourite other Roald Dahl book is Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. Us French horn players love playing themes to do with space and this very famous tune from Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony reminds me of that Great Glass Elevator lifting off into space. <laughs> Over to you, Manna. And here I am. I play this instrument, the oboe. The oboe is a very special instrument. If you go and watch an orchestra in concert, the first sound you will hear will probably be of the oboe. This is because we sit in the, right in the middle of the orchestra and before the concert starts, we play the tuning note for the whole orchestra to tune their instruments to, which is the A. So watch out for the oboe next time you go and watch an orchestra in concert. The oboe is a double reed instrument. We call it because we have this thing called the reed. 
and it's double reed because we have two very thin panes of bamboo like material bound together so when you blow into it they vibrate against each other and make a sound so I make my reed from scratch all by myself by hand and I'm very proud of it and it's like an instrument in itself Yeah, it doesn't sound that great on its own. But if you put it into the oboe, it sounds much better. Many of you might recognise that tune. <clears throat> it's a very famous ballet music written by a Russian composer called Tchaikovsky. And the ballet is called Swan Lake. And it's a very sad story. But you can imagine the swan princess flying over the lake from that music. Now I'd like to play to you a very short piece. A piece that reminds me of The Forest of Sin from Roald Dahl's Billy and the Mimpins. Billy was very bored and wanted to go into the forbidden forest behind his house. But his mom said there are horrible monsters in there, such as the Wangdoodle, Hornswogglers, Snozwanglers and Vermicious Knits. And the worst of them all is the terrible blood suckling, tooth pluckling, stone chuckling Spittler. But Billy still wanted to go in. So his mum reminded him of the terrible rhyme that, that should scare all children from going into the forest. Beware, beware the forest of sin. None come out, but many go in. That was a little bit of a short piece by Gilles Silvestrini and it depicting a path going through the woods and you could hear the mysterious path leading you into the forest and also the birds singing but everything is a little bit eerie. I hope you liked it. Next a little bit of music you'll hear in a concert next year. This is the theme for Red Riding Hood composed by Paul Patterson. And this is her galloping through the woods to come to her grandma's cottage. Now I hand you over to Jo. Hello, I'm Jo and this is my clarinet. Now, as you can see, this instrument, like Manor's oboe, is made of wood and has metal keys on it, and it also has a reed on the top. But unlike Manor's oboe, this reed is a single reed, which means it's only one piece of bamboo, and I can't make a sound out of it on its own, like this. I have to put it on the top of my instrument in order to be able to make my sound. Now, 
Roald Dahl's stories take these characters to weird and wonderful places. And one of my favourites is in the book James and the Giant Peach, where the characters get to fly on the peach all the way across the ocean to New York City. And I'm just going to play you a short piece now that describes uh, the Big Apple and all the famous buildings that you see there, like the Empire State Building and the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> That piece is by a composer called George Gershwin and it's called Rhapsody in Blue. And that piece makes use of a style of music that originated in America called jazz. And as you probably heard, the clarinet and its cousin, the saxophone, uh, are particularly well suited to jazz. I think you will agree. Uh, the, uh, in the piece Three Little Pigs uh, by Roald Dahl, uh, the uh, clarinet plays a very particular character uh, uh, which also uses jazz to describe this character as you'll hear in a minute. Roald Dahl talks about the pigs in his story with different characters saying that pigs are noble, pigs are clever, pigs are courteous. However, now and then, to break this rule, one meets a pig who is a fool. Now, this foolish, silly pig is played by the clarinet at the beginning of the story, and I will play you the short tune uh, that is written to describe this pig now. And you might hear how silly the pig is being. He's rushing around uh, and he's causing uh, lots of mischief. So here we go. So that's a little bit about the clarinet for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And now I'm going to pass you over to Kat, who will introduce to you our final instrument. Hello, I'm Kat. And last, but definitely not least, is this wonderful instrument here. It's so long, it only just fits on your screens. It's called the bassoon. Now, just in case you're wondering how to spell that funny old word, it's just like this, bassoon. Now, if I say this word just a little bit funny, it might give you a clue as to why the bassoon is called the bassoon. The bassoon is a bass boom. Now, the really important part of that word is bass. The bassoon is a bass instrument and what that means is that we're really, really, really good at playing low notes. I think the first thing I should do is show you just how low we can go. instrument that is the little baby brother or sister of the bassoon. Now we know that they come from the same family because of one very special thing, this here, the reed. Now just like the oboe, this reed is a double reed, so it's made of two pieces of bamboo, of that panda food. And just like manna, I spent hours making my read and I'm really really proud of it and I think you should hear it on its own. Beautiful. But just to prove to you how important this bit is, can you see if I try and play the bassoon without it, this is what happens.
nothing. And the bassoon reed works as an instrument all on its own. Have a listen. If you like, you could have a go at making your very own reed at home. All you need is one straw and one pair of scissors. Now, a straw on its own when I blow, just like a bassoon without a reed, doesn't really do anything just yet. That's because there's nothing to vibrate. What I have to do is, number one, I'm going to take my straw and I'm going to just squash it a little bit in half. Really give it a good squash at this end. And then I am going to do two little snips. One snip on this side and another snip on this side. And in the end it will look just like this. Now you can see when we look at the side that there are two bits now which can move and flap around and hopefully now it's going to make some noise. Let's give it a go. Bingo! Now this straw can only really make one noise because it is just one length. Earlier I made a very special straw. This is one which if I hold it up really close perhaps you can see I made some tiny little holes in it. Just like a bassoon, a flute, a clarinet and an oboe they all have holes in it. So does this straw. When I blow at the moment all of my air will come rushing out of this first hole that it gets to. If I put down one finger it has to come out of this one. If I put down another one, out of this one, until if I put down all of my fingers, my air has to go a really long way, all the way along the tube and out the end. And when I move my fingers and change where the air is going, it also will change how it sounds. exactly the same with my bassoon. You can see there are lots of holes in my bassoon and also loads of these silver things that we call keys that I use to help me cover and uncover the holes. My favourite one is this one here. If I wiggle this here it makes this key up here wiggle. That is also a really important hole because that is the last one that my air gets to because my air goes in here all the way round this bendy crook all the way down this side all the way down here and to the end of the bassoon. Now you can see there's no hole in the end of my bassoon so what it has to do next to my air, it can't get out, it has to go round the corner and then all the way back up this side here, all the way along here. It keeps going along this side and if I shut this one then eventually my air has to go all the way round and come out of this big hole at the end. So if I go down, if I shut more holes, my sound has to go further and further and that means it gets lower all the way like this. Musicians spend a lot of time with their instruments and I do nearly everything with my bassoon. We like to do the crossword, a nice bit of exercise and then after that 
have a lovely cup of tea. I also like to make sure that he does all of the boring jobs with me around the house, including the washing up. But he's a very fussy bassoon and he just does not like getting wet. So just to make sure that he stays happy, we have for him a rubber glove. What we have to do is we take this rubber glove and we put it over the end and then we tie it on nice and tight. So, if we try to play you a tune now, what do you think would happen? Let's give it a go. Now you've been meeting some of our favourite Roald Dahl characters and I would like to introduce you to one of mine. He is George from George's Marvellous Medicine and there's a bit in this book when he's making his fantastic potion he suddenly finds himself dancing around his big pot and this piece of music I'm about to play you next is a tiny little bit of a dance where first of all you can hear him sweeping around really smoothly in this dance and then later on you can hear him jump up in the air and jump up again <laughs> I'd also like to introduce you to one more Roald Dahl character, and that is the Grandma from Little Red Riding Hood. Now, if you come to our Revolting Rhymes and Marvellous Music concert next year, you will get to hear this music, which was written by Paul Patterson. And this grandma, all you really need to know about her is that she's a little bit wobbly on her legs. <laughs> Now that you have heard from all of us, we would like to tell you about our competition. You have heard how we can create all sorts of different characters with our instruments through music, and you've heard all about our favourite Roald Dahl characters. For this competition, we would love for you to choose your favourite Roald Dahl character, and once you have chosen them, we would like you to create your own piece of music that you think represents and sounds like that character. We would love for you to video this and to send this in and we will choose our favourite entry. When you are making your piece of music, have a think about what your character is like. Do you think their music would be loud and stompy? Or are they a very happy character? Maybe then your music would be really fast. Or maybe they're sometimes a bit sad and your music might be slow and quite low. So have a think about all of these things and then create your piece of music. You could play it on any instruments you like or on anything you can find around the house. Maybe some saucepans or something could be involved. And if you like, you could also sing. You might even want to add in some words. We can't wait to see what you come up with. 
Once you have made your video, please send it in to michelle.grows at promsatstjudes.org.uk. We will then choose our favourite entry and we will put that up on the website and on the Facebook page. Good luck! Thank you so much for listening and joining in wonderfully with all of our activities. We will be back at Proms at St Jude's in person next year with our full Roll Dahl themed Revolting Rhymes and Marvellous Music show. Yes! For the show, we'll also be joined by two more of our fabulous friends, actress Rebecca Kenny and pianist Sue Ling King. We would love to see all of you there next year. In the meantime, we hope you have enjoyed today's concert. We would love to finish off by playing you one final piece of music, this time with all five of us playing together as a full wind quintet. This piece was written by a Hungarian composer called Ferenc Farkas. It's a super, super speedy piece called Leaping Dance. We are sure you will see why and hope you will join in with us dancing all the way to the end and finish off with one enormous leap. <laughs> Festival in June 2021. Don't forget that Proms at Home are raising money for Toynbee Hall and for North London Hospice and if you would like to donate please do visit promsatstjudes.org.uk and click on the donation bucket. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for watching. watching.